Hello guys, hope all are doing good. In this session, we'll see a few interview questions of the system verilog. Before going to start, have a look here. The giveaway of this video, whoever posted your answers for the given questions, we are providing a free live demo session on SOC level verification. Giveaway questions will be discussed at the end of the session. Interested students can join us. Okay guys, we'll start the session. In this session, we'll mainly concentrate on the randomization and the constraints topics, which are the most important in the system verilog. Okay, coming to the problem statement one, the, uh, this is related to how to do the randomization of a variable, different type of variables and how to generate the different values to the particular variables. Okay, and coming to pro problem statement two, which is uh, related to how to disable the randomization, how to enable and disable. And coming to problem statement three, how to use the pre-randomize and post-randomize functions uh, or methods we can call uh, by using the randomize method. And coming to problem statement four, how to disable and enable the constraint. And last, which is very most important uh, question in the interview point of view, how to override the class constraints and what is the need of soft constraint in detail explanation. Okay, we'll see all these things today's session. If you have any doubts, uh, you can comment below. Okay, coming to the first question. If you see here the problem statement one, what it is telling in detail? Option A is four rand variables, field one and four each of the size. Okay, first of all, we'll discuss what is mean by the randomization. As you know that in Verilog also we did the randomization, right? What is the need of randomization? Whenever we are generating the hardcore values by using the variables, input variables, hardcore var var variables, uh, hardcore values is not necessary at all time. We cannot generate the multiple scenarios, different types of scenarios we cannot generate, which are corner cases, right? So that's why to satisfy the uh, different type of uh, scenarios, so we are moving to the randomization concept and it is also very easy to generate. No need to write the many number of values. We cannot, we, we don't want to generate the many hardcore values, suppose 10 type, uh, 10 types of uh, uh, values if you want. Okay, uh, we need to write the 10 number of times like a equal to something a could be equal to something like the 10 times we need to uh, assign some value to the inputs but by using the randomization by using simply a randomized method automatically it will generate how many times you want those uh, necessary uh, scenarios it will be generated okay and so here we can do the randomization by using mainly method as we are seeing the system verilog here in verilog we will have uh, normally like a dollar random which is a uh, static in nature. But here we will use everything in terms of methods, right? So here we'll have the randomized method. So first one is four bit variable, uh, which is a rand variable. And coming to second, B bit, one rand C variable. Okay, that is the address. What is mean by difference between rand and rand C? We'll discuss. Okay, option C and option D related to the constraint topic. So we'll discuss in that question. And E is address minimum value should be all zeros, four zeros, and maximum value should be four F. Okay, we need to uh, do the constraint in between that range. Okay, and counter value should be in the range of one to 10. Counter value is nothing but how many times we should we have to repeat the randomization, that thing. Based on the value of counter, the rand values, the variables need to be randomize okay so we'll see how to write the question for this problem statement okay first i have taken the class packet and it told four rand variables like a field one to field four which is a size of five bit so rand bit four down to zero and field one rand bit four down to zero field two field three field four and second b statement is one rand c variable address so rand c bit variable address so we'll see what is the difference between rand and rand c okay suppose here whatever the five bit size uh, we are uh, whatever the five bit size we are doing the randomization here it will generate two power five values right uh, two power five in the sense up to 32 values it will generate think so so uh, and again rand c rand c is nothing but how, what is the size four bit four bit means it will randomize to power four that means 16 different values okay so whenever you are using rand and rand c 
uh, the rand will generate the var values in a uh, repeating way okay whereas a rand c it will not generate the value in a repeated way okay what is the uh, a disadvantage with the, uh, by repeating the value suppose i have taken this as a 2 bit size uh, uh three bit size suppose it is doing the randomization six two six seven uh five again six okay here six is repeating three times if six repeat three times what happens the scenarios will be less right in terms of uh, in terms of uh, two six if it generates some other value like a one or any zero or any four we can cover more number of scenarios right uh, so this this is the main limitation by using the rand Okay, that's why we are moving to the rand C. By using the rand C, once it will generate the all cyclic values, then only we will move to the uh, repeating value. Suppose here three bit size. Three bit size means total eight combinations. First, it will generate all the eight combinations. Then only, if needed, then only it will generate the uh, same combination again. Okay, so that is the main difference. And end class we just declared here and module constraint block or randomization you can take initial begin we have created the object for the class picket equal to new but uh, that is nothing but creating repeat of 10 times we are doing the repeat of 10 times okay uh, as here it told the counter value should be in the range of 1 to 10 here uh, we just taken repeat of 10 in remaining example we can see how to generate using the for loop also okay and pkt dot randomize we are, we are displaying all the values here you already know we should take the suppose if you want to call this uh, if you want to access these uh, class uh, variables we need to access through object okay so that is the uh, display statement so we'll see the output here okay see here field 1 field 3 field 2 and field 4 okay it is generating different type of values if you want to generate as the statement mentioned here uh, like a field 1 should generate the odd value field 2 and 4 should generate the even value so if you want to generate like that what we need to do we need to add different types of constraints okay but here field 1 generated both the odd and even value all the fields generated both odd and even value okay and address is between i have taken only 0 to f if you want you can take uh, you can satisfy this condition okay all zeros to all f okay you can try that example i have taken rand c here so if you observe no repeated value no repeated value but uh, if i take rand c uh, maybe uh, only rand i am taking rand in place of rand c maybe we, we will get the generated values again and again the same scenarios it may generate again and again okay we'll see that okay see here if you observe um b has generated again two times the b generated right only b generated two times so to avoid that thing we can use the rand c suppose it will uh, sometimes it will generate multiple times same value it will generate multiple times sometimes so that for the uh, for to avoid that thing uh, we can use the rand c okay i think you understood that question and okay coming to the second question write a code to disable the address and data should be randomized the value okay that means whenever you want to uh, disable the randomization suppose at particular time you don't want to do the randomization of particular uh, variable okay that time you can do the disable and after some time whenever you needed you can do the enable of that particular variable okay so how can we do this disabling and enabling means we have the randomization mode rand mode okay if rand mode is zero we can disable if rand mode equal to one we can enable the randomization okay we'll see those things how to write the program okay see suppose here class packet rand byte address size is the byte here 8 bit and rand byte data and class okay and module rand methods we have created the object and pkt dot address dot rand mode of zero we are making this address randomization disable okay 
then pkt dot randomize we are doing the randomization method how we can do the randomization means like this okay pkt dot randomize of method uh, in verilog we just use dollar random right uh, there we don't want to take any objects like that just try it away but here through the object we need to call so we are calling in terms of methods okay so dollar display we have dis we are displaying the address value and data value and what is the value of ran mode that also we can check okay uh, address ran mode value and the data ran mode value so this is how we can uh, uh, disable and enable the randomization suppose here we have kept uh, ran mode of 0 if you want to do the enable you need to put 1 okay so see here address equal to 0 it it didn't did any randomization because disable it already disable and data equal to minus 71 some randomized value it generated suppose if you want to uh, see multiple times so then you can put a repeat value or a for loop okay and address to ran mode of uh, what is the value if you want to check then ran mode is 0 data ran mode is 1 okay suppose uh, here in 15th line i am keeping as a 1 here okay that means pkt dot address ran mode of one i'm just making enable then what is the output we'll see okay see address equal to some minus 71 we got data equal to some value we got okay then ran mode also both are one okay so this is how we can do the randomization enable and randomization disable okay these are uh, randomization constraints or topics are very easy but how the interview questions will be asked means uh, how can you do the randomization how to use the randomization method uh, and uh, what is the difference between rand c rand uh, and uh, what is the difference between disable and enable how to use uh, mainly syntaxes you need to remember okay like this rand mode or uh, how to write the syntax those things you mainly have to remember okay and what is the difference between pre-randomized post-randomized these only things uh, the interviewers ask and beyond some logical questions uh, some product based company ask some logical questions okay so mostly whatever in each concepts uh, the interviewer will ask we are trying to cover those things up mainly okay coming to the third question add pre-randomized and post-randomized and set some value to the randomized variables and invoke the display okay so what is the pre-randomized post-randomized means suppose if you want to display any uh, pre-statements okay then uh, we can write in the pre-randomized and if you want to display anything after the randomization like any uh, value whatever you have seen output value li li like uh, those type of display statements you can put in the post randomize okay those things we'll see and here if you see field one and field three should hold the odd value and field two field four should hold the even value how they hold the values those type of values here we will we'll see the constraints topic okay one of the main important topic in the system where law for the randomization is the constraint it is a constraint based randomization okay if you see in very long we can't use any constraints by using dollar random only if you want to generate any multiples of three multiples of five or minimum value to maximum value we have some uh, uh, like expressions for that okay but uh, in system where law, by using the constraints those all things we can uh, control okay randomization will be controlled by the constraint because suppose i am uh, if you see um, here where field one field three is there suppose the field one or field four or anything is generating zero to five that means total six bits six bits means total two power 60 number of six six combinations will be there right uh, so in that case what happens we don't need those many scenarios okay practically if you see we don't need those many scenarios whenever you want to take just you need only 100 to 200 but the size you need to take as a six bit only okay but whatever the variable address it is generating i need only 0 to 100 or i need only 10 to 100 or only i need uh, the odd values in the odd values i want to store the data or in even address i want to store the data so in that time we can write the constraints okay by using the constraint we can write those things and what are the different types of constraints are there there are 
so many types of constraints okay in the system well uh, like uh, if you take any inline constraint we'll see the inline constraint like a bidirectional constraint bidirectional is mostly independent suppose one variable is uh, dependent on another variable like that uh, like a uh, soft constraints we have uh, unique queue constraints we have unique queue means so uh, it generate a unique queue value and uh, uh, like uh, implication uh, these are the different types of uh, constraints we have okay so one by one you can go through that and you can practice mainly in this session we'll discuss the soft constraint which is most important uh, uh, which is asked in the interview questions okay so coming to the uh, uh, answer class packet ran bit you already know how to declare all the things right so coming to the constraint this is the constraint syntax you have to remember the syntax okay uh, if you see like this it will be look like very easy but you when you are writing the program you will forget the syntax even this semicolon if you don't put you will get the syntax errors okay so constraint c1 is the constraint name uh, it is like this a bracket you need to put and field one which variable uh, for that you need to write uh, field one uh, these are two um, mod two field one mod two is not equal to zero that means what uh, the remainder is not equal to zero means it is a odd value right and the remainder equal to zero means it generates the even value so we are telling here according to our statement field 1 and field 3 should hold hot value and field 2 and field 4 should hold even value like that we have written the constraint okay and uh, coming to the pre randomized and post randomized functions see function void pre randomized it is a predefined we need not to change the name if you change the name it won't generate okay so we are just displaying the some pre-randomized uh, display functions if you want to uh, display any statements those things uh, we need to uh, display okay at starting if you want to put like a pre-statements and function void post randomize post randomize inside the post randomize whatever the randomized values are there for field one field two field three field four i'm displaying here okay and if you see in the module constraints block packet pkt we have created the packet and counter okay here it it told that count value should be less than 10 0 to 10 right so uh, for, by using the for loop uh, previously we have used the repeater okay so here we are using the for loop by using the for loop also we can generate the count value so 0 to less than 10 times it will print the value pkt dot randomize pkt dot randomize we already know that is normal randomize uh, method but before the pkt dot randomize method the pre-randomized method will be executed then randomized method will be executed then post randomized method will be executed this is the flow of execution okay first pre randomize post okay automatically one by one whenever this randomized method is calling automatically these two will be called okay so like this we can put the uh, pre and post statements by using the randomization okay think you understood if you don't understood please comment below we'll see the result and then the thing if you observe here uh, suppose if you write this the same display statement within the randomized what you need to do just hold and answer the in the comment box suppose same display statement i have written here suppose the uh, same i am writing here then how i need to change that statement based on variables because uh, suppose uh, as we can't access this field one field three field two field four directly i need to write like a pkt dot field one pkt dot field three pkt dot field two like that but here we are accessing within the class right so no need to put pkt dot okay if you put pkt dot you will get error okay you can check those things uh, very small small things okay when you are doing practicing more 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 then uh, you will remember all those things okay so see inside a pre-randomize first pre-randomize statement will be displayed then post randomize if you see post randomize field one is a odd number field three is a odd number field two is a 10 field four is a four 
okay so these two are odd these two are even if you say anywhere two odd two even two odd two even two odd two even like that okay and here also you can put some conditions suppose uh, here the constraint the even values it is generating it should generate only 0 to 10 even value the odd value should generate only 0 to 10 like that you can put the constraints okay based on your user uh, like uh, whatever the specification has given uh, we can change accordingly okay so i hope this question you understood and coming to the fourth question write the code for enabling and disabling the constraints whatever we have did for uh, then coming to fourth question write the code for enabling and disabling the constraint so whatever we have written for the randomization how we have enabled and disabled by using the rand mode of zero and rand mode of one same thing we are going to write here okay by using the constraint mode of zero constraint mode of one okay so if you see here class packet ran bit address some address and some data okay uh, constraint address range we have taken address these are the inside constraints inside constraint means inside it should generate only these values okay uh, we are not telling to generate between 0 to 100 or uh, 20 to 50 like that we are telling it should have only these values okay like 5 10 15 those are also particular cases uh, where you find okay and constraint data range data inside 2 comma 1 this data is telling to generate only 2 and 1 value okay this is the inside constraint so module constraint packet we have created a uh, disable constraint constraint that mean uh, before constraint disable okay uh, pkt dot randomize we are doing the randomization for address and data constraint disable means what uh, uh, not these values it will generate some other values and pkt dot rand address range dot constraint mode of zero constraint mode of zero means uh, we are disabling the constraint okay so after that we are uh, displaying the statements address and data so what the statements it will display we'll see like that you can uh, you can play some uh, games also with these uh, like uh, uh, after uh, doing the disable you can enable suppose if you want to generate some more uh, tables uh, like multiple tables uh, at what time you want to like by using the table uh, multiples of three table you can uh, display only uh, three into one th uh, three into three three into six three into nine like that okay um, by disable and enabling the constraints that is possible so if you see before constraint disable address equal to 10 whatever we have written here and address equal to 5 and data equal to 2 data equal to 1 after constraint disable address equal to 11 which is not in the constraint address equal to 5 and data equal to 5 here uh, uh, it got randomized not only that it just randomized some value okay but it is not considering these values okay so this is how we can enable and disable the constraint as per the requirement we can do that thing okay and coming to final question which is very important question how to override the class constraint suppose here we have the insider which is declared in the parent class okay constraints we can write suppose this is the small example but if you take a test bench level okay in the test bench architecture whatever we have write, writing in the system web law we will have the generator block and transactor block uh, and there will be driver block monitor these things are there right uh, so mainly constraints where we will write we will write whether in the generator block in the transaction block okay so when you are writing the transaction block this is this will be the main block this will be the main class in the transaction only we will generate the input variables right uh, like a rand for output so we will take all the things in the transaction only so the, if you write these constraints in the transaction that will be the main constraint for that particular whole project 
for that particular class and the whole project it will be the main constraint okay whenever you want to override those main constraints suppose here address inside 5 comma 10 comma 15 it is telling it is fixed it is telling it should be those only but sometimes but sometimes it required to generate some other values also okay it is required to generate some other values also then what we have to do so the main question is how to override the class constraint whatever i have shown you the example now how can we override we'll see that thing okay see here class packet rand bit three down to zero address constraint address range address is greater than six this is the main within the within the transaction class you think so or within the generator class you think whatever which is written in the main class related to main project okay main according to the spec but sometimes we need to override those constraints then this is nothing but uh, within the module whatever we have written pkt dot randomize method with uh, with is nothing but inline constraint okay we are writing here inline constraint okay address is less than six okay we are telling this address should generate less than six not greater than six so is it possible if we put here like this it will will it override the value we'll check whether will it override the value or not okay see here what is the value address equal to zero and address equal to zero before that you need to observe these things information they have given the information what is that after reduction pkt dot address to packet it is not met it is not met okay it is not the correct method to declare those things okay suppose here i am not putting any constraint in the main class then automatically this inline constraint will be valid it will generate address less than six whatever the address we have kept less than six here it will generate accordingly see here address equal to three address equal to five by using the inline constraint but that is not the thing here right we need to override the main class constraints okay so in that place what we need to put means soft here we need to put soft if you put as a soft it will generate the it will override the value and it will generate according to the inline constraint okay see here same value address is less than six address equal to three address equal to five okay like this we can use the different types of constraints not only these there are diff yeah, some other constraints also you can go through that if you have any doubts you can contact okay so hope you understood today's session so practice well guys these are the giveaway questions we already discussed the oops concepts right like what is the difference between class object inheritance encapsulation all these things you need to provide with an example of these codes okay and need of virtual task and virtual function with the example code this is one of the most important interview question okay so whoever interested just keep these questions in the comment box sorry answers in the comment box so we'll provide the link uh, by end of the week okay uh, the soc level verification session will be next week okay on 8th of april or 9th of april we will uh, share you the link uh, before one or two days only okay to your comment box okay thank you